Thank you all for joining us today. Like I said earlier, this is uh, nap time for me. And all I ask is that you don't snore. So uh, it's also the day after May the 4th. So I wore my favorite Star Wars t-shirt. And if you're a nerd enough, you'll get the reference because it's like a double entendre. And uh, I even wore my Stormtrooper socks because uh, well, you got to celebrate May the 4th, right? So it's, we decided it's Revenge of the 5th. So, oh well, <laughs> close enough. So uh, I, my name is David Zimmerman. I own an internet marketing consultancy called Reliable Acorn. I've been in internet marketing, especially search marketing, for about 10 years now. Uh, four years ago, I went out on my own, started my own thing. And uh, I tell you, over all this time, I've learned that the most important thing anybody can do when using their website to promote their business is to measure everything. You know, this is where the power of internet marketing comes from. You know, we're not buying a radio spot and hoping someone sees it or hears it. I guess it's a radio spot. They're going to hear it, right? It shows you how much I know about radio marketing. But I do know that it's really hard to see if something like that helps you. You know, you, you might say, oh, I'm going to buy a magazine ad in this magazine periodical. Hey, well, that might be great. And you, you might spend a lot of money and think, it's, I spent so much money, surely it's going to work. But then you kind of feel like it works. And that's really disappointing. And that's why I don't do that kind of marketing. Because I like the power of the internet marketing because we know if it works or not. The power of internet marketing is our ability to measure everything we do. There is a problem, though. And that might be why you're here today. Because there's so much data. What are you supposed to believe? What are you supposed to do? Should you look at your bounce rate? Should you look at the pages per visitor? Should you look at the, what's the difference between a page view and a visit and a session and a user and ugh. And so we have analysis paralysis. And we look at all this stuff and we're like, looks good. But it gets worse. When we're paying for advertising, maybe we're doing AdWords, maybe we're doing Facebook, maybe we're doing Snapchat. And we have to ask ourselves after we're paying for this traffic or impressions, not of necessarily the accuracy of the data they're presenting to us, but is Facebook giving us data that helps us to know it's effective? Or is Facebook giving us data to make Facebook look really good so we keep spending money with them? And we, we, we have all these numbers, and they, it sounds great to have 10,000 impressions on our Facebook campaign. But did that help? It feels like it did. It, it might have. I Surely it did something. We're losing the power in our confusion. And so what I'm hoping to do today is to provide for you a solution. A solution to analysis paralysis in marketing data. A solution to whether or not you should believe or t trust this particular metric. The solution is a measurement plan. Now, I know we're all busy. And I know that we just kind of want to get down to the nitty gritty. And if you were at Nathan's talk yesterday about making sure you have the time to plan ahead, even though you don't have the time to plan ahead, right? This is where we all live. But as with most things in life, time to make a plan and develop a strategy will end up making everything more efficient, allowing you to have the power that you need to understand what marketing is working, what marketing is wasting money, where you should double down, and where you should cut off, because you have a measurement plan to understand 
what you should be looking at. So let's start in episode one. <laughs> Forget about your website for a moment. All right, pretend we're not at WordCamp. What is, what are your business objectives? Think about it. What does your business hope to accomplish? Forget about your website. Forget about the Facebook and Zuck and the Twitters and Jack. And, and, and for what, what is your business objective? Now, Cobbler's Kid's got no shoes, sorry. Um, as I'm writing this presentation, I'm like, that's a good point, David. What is my business <laughs> objective? I, I should put it down. So I, I wrote it on a post-it note, right? Because I need the, 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 need, the doctor needs to heal himself. Um, so the, the, the business objective of Reliable Acorn is to help B2B companies grow through remark, reliable internet marketing advice and services. That's my business objective to help B2B companies grow through reliable internet marketing advice and services. That's what my business wants to accomplish. What, what, does anybody know what their business objective is? Want to volunteer it? Yes, what's your business objective? My business objective for my website is to articulate that coming to my company is not Okay, okay. If you were to sum that up really short, what would you be, if we could sum it up in like one sentence, how would you say it? Safe, affordable home care. Safe, affordable home care. You want to provide safe, affordable home care. That is a great business objective. And I think you should win a prize for that. <laughs> you brought him up right. <laughs> Who else? A business objective. Yes, sir. I teach freelancers how to raise their rates, get better clients, and make better business decisions. Okay. You teach freelancers to charge better rates, give better advice, and make better Get better clients and make better, and make better business decisions. There you go. That's your objective, your business. I think that's great too. You get a snow speeder. Now, oh, right at the camera. That's going to be great on WordPress TV. Um, for your reference, I bought three of these yesterday. Only two made it here. So, so. It's, it's important to kind of summarize and distill what your business objective is. Because once you know your business objective, you can move on to the better episode, episode two. How will your website accomplish these objectives? Right? Remember, when we're talking about business objectives, we're really asking, forgetting about the web. But step two is to say, OK, great. You've got a WordPress site. How is that site going to accomplish these objectives? So let me, let me suggest some of your websites are selling things to accomplish your business objectives. You've got a product. People, you want them to buy it. It will better their life if they have it. And so they want it. But I think that a lot of business owners forget that websites can do much more than just sell a product. For instance, me. I don't really sell a product. I want my website to give me leads, right? My business objective involves giving my clients reliable internet marketing advice and services. I need clients to do that. I get clients when I get leads, right? But some of you have a business that's brick and mortar. You have a shop, you're paying rent. You need people to come in your door. That's what your website needs to accomplish. And others, 
Maybe you're selling ads on your site. Maybe you have affiliate marketing revenue that you get from your site. Your business objective is really all about publishing content to get more of the kickback, right? So there's several ways, there's probably more than this, but there's several ways a website could accomplish your business objective. And, and frankly, sometimes it, 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 you're using more of these, right? Like my business objective is to help clients by providing them the most reliable blah, 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 blah. You got it. I don't want to sound like an advertisement. But so I want leads, but I'm also publishing, right? That's a way I'm providing that advice. I have clients who, who sell machinery, industrial machinery, but some of that industrial machinery is, you know, five-figure machines, and no one's going to give their credit card to buy a $50,000 rock crusher, right? So really, it's a website that's selling rock crushing machines, and it's not really selling it. You're sending the lead to a salesperson who then follows up. So it's selling and leads. Some who want to get people in the door, they want to get people in the door, but maybe they sell a little bit online too, right? Sometimes you combine these together. So, so my, my two victims, I mean participants, <laughs> right? What, how is your website going to help you accomplish your business objective? Okay. Because those are different where it's the home care worker is an independent contractor. Okay. So I'm an agency and I'm an employee and I'm licensed by the state of Pennsylvania. Okay. And so I guess I'm I'm really not getting many leads right now. On okay. Day, okay. Yeah. So I'm just selling a presence to get you in the door. And I'm working on, that's why I came here today, yeah. to work on content. Sure. Because that's very overwhelming. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's only so much that you can say in my industry because yeah. it's oversaturated right. and it's, um, it's really not exciting mm -hmm. like making websites and mm -hmm. selling shirts and stuff. Right, so right. That's how I'm using my website. Okay. But uh, you, you hit on an important point, I think. Mm -hmm. You might not be getting a lot of leads right now, mm -hmm. but ultimately that is what you would like to get out of your website, right? Mm -hmm. Right, because publishing and stuff like that is really about getting the leads, right? So your website helps you get leads. Maybe not many yet, but that's okay. We're all there, right? Mm -hmm. And so you, you're, one way your website accomplishes your business objective is through leads. Mm -hmm. And that's great. How about you? What is your, how does your website help your business objective? So I publish content yeah. uh, to get leads or yes. to obtain leads to eventually sell you a product uh, that you, know, you deem valuable. Okay. So you have a product, but is that fulfilled through the lead? It's, so the lead helps uh, sell the product to the lead. Okay, 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 great, right. So we all need to think about this, how this applies to our business objective. What our website is, or what do your clients' websites business object, what does your clients' websites do for their business objective? Well, we have to make a distinction between macro and micro when it comes to how a website could accomplish a business objective. Macro means what is the thing your website will do that will get you closest to the money? Micro is something that gets someone closer to the thing that finally gets you money, right? So in my case, I want leads, but I have an email list, right? I don't make money from my email list. I don't sell my emails, right? I don't put affiliate links in my emails. Well, sometimes I do. But that's not my primary source of income, right? But the micro lead of getting someone signed up on my email address is to get someone to fulfill the macro lead, which is the, the sales lead, hey, David, I need your help. I'm going to pay you money. That is where I make the money. I make the money when I get the lead, sell the client, then they pay me. But I, you can't confuse the macro and the micro. And I think that's where some of us go wrong sometimes. There's, our websites want to accomplish everything. And there's a lot a website needs to do productively. But let's make a distinction between 
The macro goal, meaning the thing that's closest to when we get paid as the website owner or the business that owns the website, and what are the micro goals which get us closer to the thing that gets us. So we can put this in context with social media, for example. It is awesome to have a bunch of Facebook followers, but unless you named Kardashian, the number of Facebook followers doesn't, well, okay, Instagram followers, doesn't get you money, right? That is a micro goal that gets you closer to, they're following you on Instagram, they see your post, they interact with you, they begin to trust you, they begin to rely on your expertise, and then when they need your help, they call you. There you go. They've called you. They've become a lead. That's the macro goal. So when we're looking at all the data that we can look at, we have to ask, what is the most important thing closest to where you get paid? That's the macro goal. Everything else is a step towards that in a micro goal. Following me? Any questions so far? All right, let's continue then. So episode three is where it starts to get a little interesting. How can you measure them? We know what our business objective is. We've, we know how our website will help us accomplish that business objective. How are we going to measure them? This is where we get the power of marketing through our website. Because we should be able to measure everything. And that's why we should all have Google Analytics on our site. Right? There's many number of ways to measure data about our website. Jetpack has their own, you know, with, and that's the same as on, if you have a WordPress.com site, you're using Jetpack data. Uh, there's other things like Facebook data that you could use. I think everyone really has no excuse not to have Google Analytics on their site. It's easy to set up. It is have a treasure trove of data. How many of you have Google Analytics on your site right now? Okay. Great. You're getting there. Problem is, there's a lot of data in there, right? How do we filter through this? How do we figure out what we should be looking at? But the first step is just to install it. There's any number of easy ways to do it. Monster Insights is a great plugin. It makes it very easy. Uh, if you want to go a little more advanced, you can install an instance of Google Tag Manager on your site and let that serve up. Google Analytics, it has a lot more flexibility for you, but at least get analytics on your site somehow. Once you have analytics on your site, you're not done. Because you need to connect the thing that your website's helping you do to get to your business objective to Google Analytics. Okay? If you're selling something on your site, that means you need to send the e-commerce data into Google Analytics. You might be using a WooCommerce or something like that. Sometimes if you're using Shopify outside of WordPress, there's ways to set up your system to simply send the transaction data, send the number of, uh, the number of dollars that someone have paid. Like you want all that data to go into your Google Analytics account because that is the macro goal that you want to accomplish. If you are trying to get leads, you need to set up what Google Analytics calls a goal. And what that means is whenever someone submits a, f a lead from your website, you need it tracked. And Google Analytics will, will handle that event in a different fashion. Um, if I recommend using a lead form on your website because if everyone will come to your website, they have to use the form to contact you. And it's very easy to track a form submission in Google Analytics, especially if you set up the form to go to a confirmation page. Because then all you got to do is say, hey, Google Analytics, this is the URL for the confirmation page. Anytime someone visits the confirmation page, the only way they got there is by submitting the form. Therefore, I know I got a lead. And there's other ways to do this. Um, like you could put your email address on your, on your website. But if you don't connect that to Google Analytics, 
All you know is I got people submitting or contact me by email, but you don't have the power of Google Analytics to say how they found you and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Is the contact form the same thing as a lead form? Yeah. Yeah, if the contact form is the same as a lead form, um, you can use any number of form plugins. But I rec always recommend using a confirmation page. I think it's a better user experience because it confirms to the user that you did get their lead. There's nothing more frustrating to me when I fill out a form on a website and the form resets. Did, 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 did I waste my time? Did they get it? Then I'm anxious and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm, I'm out of here. So set up your form so it goes to a confirmation page. If, if your website is trying to get people into the door and that's your business objective, it's a little more challenging, but you can still track it in Google Analytics. What if you have a page on your site on directions to get to your store? Right? I, I hope you do. I mean, you can use you know, Google My Business and stuff like that, but have a page on your site. What, and you measure how many people are getting to that page as a way of saying people are interested enough in my business that they want to get directions to my store. So now you know you have successfully interested people in coming to your store. You want to get a little more sophisticated, you have a web only coupon that they have to give you their email address to receive. Now when they give you that coupon, the only way they got it was because they went to your website. So you know that is a website lead. Right? And we just fancy things we can do with Google Analytics to see how they found you to get that in the first place. But you want to track the goal, the macro goal that is closest to making money in Google Analytics. Now, if you're a publisher, you're informing people, you are using, if, if trying to sell affiliate links, or you're selling advertising on your site to make money, great. Now we just need to know things like, how many pages per visit? Because the more pages per visit, the more pe ads people saw, the more you can charge for people that are advertising on your site, right? Um, things like that. But by setting up the tracking, we're able to do something important. And I kind of struggle with how I wanted to call this, macro, micro, or primary, secondary. I, I ended on this. Some data is primarily connected to what your website does to accomplish your business goal. That's your primary data. Was a lead collected? Did someone make a purchase? Did someone download the coupon? That's your primary goal and you need to make sure you're able to track that in Google Analytics. If it's something that data, a piece of data that helps you understand how people are getting to there, that's a secondary piece of data. So, because clients will come to me and say, well, what do I rank? What do I rank? What do I rank, David? Hey, that's cool. I'm glad you rank. And I could go on a tangent and why, who cares? But I won't go there. Let's pretend it matters where you rank. That doesn't make you money to rank. I can think of dozens of keywords for which you rank number one that don't bring any traffic to you. So keyword ranking, if you're doing organic efforts, really is a secondary metric that leads to traffic. Because you don't really want to rank you want rank that generates traffic. But you don't really want traffic. Because we could get you traffic for all kinds of crazy ideas. You want traffic that produces a sale. That's your primary goal. Sales from the secondary goal, traffic, as a result of another secondary or tertiary goal, rank. Facebook, you got a million impressions for your promoted post. Yes, that's awesome. Did any of those people come to your site? 
Okay, so now we've got a secondary metric called impressions that leads to clicks. Of the clicks, because you've installed Google Analytics, now you know how many clicks became traffic and it's not always the same because they're calculated differently. But more importantly, how, many of that, how much of that traffic from your Facebook ads accomplished your primary goal of your website. This is where Facebook ads become really misleading in their data. They tell you all this really cool information, but it doesn't necessarily translate into the bottom line. So we help by understanding what our business objective is, how our website's accomplishing that business objective, and what we're tracking as far as our business objective goes, we're able to determine this is a primary metric or it's a secondary metric. Secondary metrics are good. You, want to, you have to have impressions in your Facebook ads if anybody's going to click on them. But that's not it in itself. If people click on your ad, great. It's just an expense to you unless that traffic from clicks become traffic. But traffic doesn't really do anything for you unless it accomplishes the primary goal of a lead or a sale or someone in the doorway of your store or seeing a lot of ads on your site or whatever your primary metric that you're tracking is. Following me so far? Okay. So now that we're able to establish our business objective, see how our website's going to accomplish that and decide and set up the tracking to measure that, now we can get to the best episode of all four and we can know how we can evaluate our website's success. So your data you know from, because you set up tracking. You now see your report in Google Analytics and you've got a hundred visitors from from Google Organic, yes! And those 100 visitors became three leads, awesome! Is that good? Oh, I'd take three leads. Could it be better? Could it, is, is that a, a month where you, you can't just take the data? The data, the numbers don't mean anything by themselves. This is why we have to begin to segment our data. We can segment our data across several dimensions. One is date. You got three leads as a result of 100 visits this month, but you got 10 leads as a result of 300 visitors last month. Now you're able to decide whether the three is good or bad because you've segmented the data. Three doesn't mean anything unless you have something against which you can compare it. So one of the most common ways to compare data is by using a date comparison. Another way is source of the traffic. You got a hundred visits from your Google organic search traffic. Thanks to Google Analytics you know that. You got five visits from your Facebook ads. Which was more effective? By segmenting the data, you now know, especially when you're able to go to the primary objective and see that Facebook brought no conversions, but Google Organic brought a bunch, right? Segmenting the data according to the source of the traffic helps you to compare. Now you know, double down on your SEO, Maybe you either need to completely revamp your Facebook ads or stop giving Zuckerberg any more money. But you won't know whether it's successful or not unless you're able to segment the data. Another important segment is location. If you are a local dog walker, it doesn't matter if someone in LA comes to your website because you are in Atlanta. But if you look at your data by location, suddenly that matters. So another way to look to see if the data is good is by segmenting it according to location. Another way you might look is new versus returning, right? For instance, like uh, 
Organic search does a really good job bringing new visitors in. Social does a really good job bringing returning visitors in. But of the newer returning visitors, which are more likely to convert, not everyone converts on the first visit. So now you can look at the primary tracked goal of your website that helps accomplish your business objective in terms of these segments. And mind you, blow you away, combining segments. Your Google Analytics, Google search traffic from last month brought in more leads from your hometown than it did the previous month. Now you've combined all your segments and you know that is working. And now you know where to spend your money, where to stop spending your money. And that is the real power of measuring everything off your website. Creating a measurement plan helps you know what you should be looking at, what you can be ignoring, what is working, what is not, where you should be spending your money, where you should stop. Please, start today on your way home. Think about what is your business objective? How does your website accomplish that? How are you going to track it? How are you going to segment your data to know whether it's working or not? Now, I have a little link here if you want some more notes. I have some, a video from Google that kind of works through how to create a measurement plan. Um, some other resources that might help you uh, create it. Uh, things to share with your team, with your partners to help you kind of figure out this together. Uh, I've, other times I've given this, this has been the topic of conversation on a Monday morning meeting the next day as they kind of work through these problems. So this might be a great resource for you to start. And you know what? I'm tracking you <laughs> because I want to know how effective coming to Atlanta was. I mean, I had a good time. Don't get me wrong, right? But I want to know how effective these efforts are. So if you click on the link, you'll see the URL is not the URL, this URL. I'm using Tag Manager, I'm not Tag Manager, uh, Google URL Builder to say, hey, you know what, so many people came to your website as a result of going to Atlanta. And of those, this many people became clients. Now, I can compare Atlanta to Birmingham, and that's right, I'm comparing you to Birmingham, <laughs> and I know what was worthwhile? Because we need to be able to measure. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to help you guys, right? I'm not here to sell, but right? please, I, I don't want to be that guy. But I want you to think about it in terms of your business too, right? Don't just throw something against the wall and hope it works. That's, please don't do that as a waste of your time and money in marketing. Measure everything, get the most out of it. All right, thank you guys. Uh, I'm happy to take some questions. I think we are, wow, that was quick. We have lots, I have no more Lego, but I do have an, maybe some answers. Yes, sir. Two questions. Yes, sir. Um, one, the URL you have there is yeah. kind of just something that you set up where it automatically determines that anybody in this room, is it like a unique URL or is it kind of like it knows, it knows the location? Okay, so we're talking about the question, how is that URL tracking the success of this? Here and now. Okay. So this URL is set up as a redirect on my website. It redirects to the landing page, which I forget offhand what it is, but I also don't want to say it because I don't want you to visit it without going through the tracking. But there's a, there's a tool within Google Analytics called the URL Builder. And what you can do is you give it certain parameters. And you can say a source of traffic, a, uh, what is the other dimensions? Uh, campaign. The campaign, the, the uh, content, keyword where it's appropriate, things like that. So I filtered in data like, this came from WordCamp, Atlanta, blah, 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 right? And so in Google Analytics, when I look at my Google Analytics data, it won't say, so many people typed in reliableacorn.com slash plan, which would be in Google Analytics considered a direct traffic, which doesn't really tell me much. 
Instead, it, in Google Analytics, it'll say the source is WordCamp. The content was this particular presentation, right? And so I, now it's added more information inside Google Analytics. So now I can see this traffic came, but obviously I have lead tracking checked up. If you submit a form through my site, I'll know how you found me, right? I tell you, clients always want to know how their leads came in, right? I get personally angry when I have to fill the lead form and the lead form makes me say how I found them. That's your job. I'm the customer. Don't make me do your marketing for you. That little offensive to me. Besides, it's never accurate. I have, I have a, um, a client that always, as part of the process of onboarding, they ask, how did you find us? Inevitably, they say, we found you by going to Google and searching for this. But because we have lead tracking on it, I know it's not right. This person did not really find you from Google Organic. This person found you from Bing. Because guess what? You have Google people on Bing, right? And they didn't know they had their browser set. Anyway, you, if you set up your tracking right, you don't have to let your customers be their marketing data. You don't have to make them feel like they're a piece of meat. You're just another, you can make them feel, because you've set up your tracking to be able to attribute to that. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Is there a tool that lets us know where they came from first? So, good, good question. So the question is, is there a way to know where leads came from from the first source? Yeah. Okay. This is an interesting thing on how Google Analytics tracks visitors and therefore leads. Google Analytics attributes a lead to the last non-direct visit. Okay? So if you're following me, that means if the last way they found me besides simply typing in the URL to my website. So they could have, uh, before they converted. So if I know I got so many leads from organic search, what that means is the, right before they contacted me, they did an organic search. But they might have months before started following me on Facebook. Right? So Google Analytics is limited in this ability because it doesn't do a good job saying how they first found me. And so maybe they, they, went, they found me on social media and then they went to my website. Then they signed up for my email list and then after receiving emails for six months, they finally Googled my name and filled out a form. In Google Analytics, that's to be considered an organic visitor. In a, a lead from organic search, but Google Analytics does not do a good job tracking that far back. Other analytics platforms that aren't free do a better job at that. There is ways to get a better view within Google Analytics at multi-channel kind of data, but it's not how it's set up by default. And so you get to find the data. Um, because of a lot of what I do, I'm more interested in the last click attribution but for more of a, if your business is a longer buying cycle and it takes a lot more touches before someone has enough credibility to trust you, home healthcare might be a great example of that, where they're going to really want to make sure they trust you before. We're a law firm. Oh, yeah, law firm. So actually, law firm's different. Law firm is, I just need a lawyer, and lawyers are very aggressive. So last click attribution works really well for law firms. Okay. Um, but uh, with other things that uh, it, it's not as effective. So uh, attribution model is what this is called, and that's a very it's a good, good question. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yes, ma'am. If you are working with clients and trying to help them understand their analytics, are there any templates or formats that you found helpful to show a client, especially if they don't have a lot of that tech knowledge, to make it really easily digestible for them? Okay. So the question is, how do you, like how do you 
How do you present data to clients in a way that is a little more manageable? Right. Okay, so there's several tools that are available. Google has a product called Data Studio, which allows you to import your Google Analytics data and your other data from other sources, combine them in one nice, neat looking report. I mean, and you can do some really neat stuff with that. It'll involve a lot of setup for you, but sometimes it's a great way to provide your client with the data that matters to them. I mean, rather than getting them distracted by going the down the rabbit hole of Google Analytics. I love, I mean, my clients should all have access to their analytics, absolutely. They should own that account, by the way, not, I should not be the delegator, they should own that data. However, they get confused. And they go, oh my gosh, my bounce rate is terrible. Mm, is it? Because blog posts are always going to have a high bounce rate. Because blog posts mean someone came to your website for a question, found your blog post, answered it, and left because their question was answered. So guess what? That's a bounce. That was a successful visit. Or if it's a bounce, they came to your website, called your phone number, they are a lead, but because you didn't set up phone call tracking, we don't know that they're a lead. And it looks like a bounce, it looks terrible, but in reality, it's a success. And so uh, I like Data Studio. I set up a little basic report that just weeds it down to the very basics. And, and they can uh, literally look at that report at any time they feel like they want to look. And it has some limited segmentation. There's also ways to set up unique dashboards in Google Analytics. And some of my clients, I'll set up a dashboard and just have Google Analytics automatically email them the relevant data. I actually do that for all my clients. Um, tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, Google will send me a bunch of different reports for all my clients. I use that to say, oops, someone removed the tracking. Or, oops, someone removed a major section of their site and the traffic dropped. And they didn't tell me about it, right? I mean, am, I, am I the only one? All right, maybe I am. But thank you. Uh, but like I send these reports mostly for me to keep up. But I can also in the custom report dashboard of Google Analytics set up the data only I want to see. And that ends up making it really efficient for me. So I just go through all those reports real quick. No problems, move on. Oh, there's a bunch of 404 errors on that client's site. I'm going to take some time to look at that and fix that problem. Um, so those are two good ways to do that. Yeah, great. Any other questions? Yes. One more question. Yes, sir. you were able to use events to actually track if people hovered and clicked on different links on your website, yeah. even elements on the site. Right. Has Google Track Manager replaced that? Okay, okay, so we're talking about, there's a way within Google Analytics you're asking to set up what's called an event. And that's a way where if something happens on your website, it's sent to Google Analytics, and it's not considered a view of a page, it's considered a different category of data called an event. And you're asking about Google Tag Manager as it relates to tracking events. So they are two different products. So Google Tag Manager is a wonderful product that you can think of like a bucket. You install Tag Manager on your website and on every page of your website and then that bucket serves up all your analytics tracking codes or other things that you want. So for instance, if you're a developer of websites and you install Tag Manager on your client's sites before you release them, your clients aren't going into code and breaking your site because they want to add a new Facebook pixel or a Bing tracking pixel, right? Because they got to go, all they have to do is go into Tag Manager and say, add this to my bucket. Within Tag Manager, it, another advantage is you don't have to add the event tracking code within the HTML of the page. So no one has to break the code in order to set up event tracking. So it is a superior way to do event tracking, but y it's a different way. And so I, I, that's why if you guys are building websites for clients, you know, you can prevent me from breaking your site when I get it to do the marketing if you just go ahead and install Tag Manager on it. And because you don't want me going into your client's sites and breaking it, because that's just going to make you hate me. And I like you, even you. Yeah. So, uh, Chad did my logo recently. Um, we have a little argument about that, but I love him. So, 
point, yeah, events is a great thing to track. And you can track all kinds of things as events. So if, if you're producing content, for instance, and you want people to watch a video, you can track as an event when someone clicks on the play button. And you set that up as a goal. In Google Analytics, now you know someone viewed a video on my site. And if it's set up as a goal, Google Analytics is able to tell you, guess what? So many people who visited you from this source of traffic viewed the video on your site. And now you can segment your data and you can say, hey, guess what? More people who came from Facebook were more likely to click on the video than people who came from Bing, right? So this is another way to track events. It doesn't have to be a goal. Um, I've seen some crazy things done with events. It's really powerful. Um, but yeah, does that help answer your question? Cool. Any other questions about, about one, more. one more question? Yes, thank you. I will have a good way home. All right. Thank you guys for coming. Have a wonderful day.